Are we live? We're live here at the Canon Club. Campeche. With Campeche, Jan de Sopo, and myself, Jose Ramos Santana. Jose Ramos Santana. One of those uh, programs that we have, Adventures, every day at 6 o'clock, every evening at 6 o'clock in the evening. And uh, all you have to do is uh, uh, log into the Canon dot club at six o'clock and will come out and as you if those of you who has uh, followers you have seen all these wonderful artists that we have been uh, interviewing uh, musicians uh, pia uh, actors uh, <coughs> people in entertainment people who I feel are the most affected because right. people who perform to crowds exactly right and in this time of uh, uncertainty for artists, especially performing artists, uh, this is, is turning out to be a great venue to keep your name alive, your art alive, and all the people who has stopped by and visited the Canon Club and Jan, and um, I get a lot of them. <laughs> so we have, every day we have somebody new Today we're going to have uh, the wonderful violinist uh, from the Figueroa family, uh, Viola. Narciso, violinist. Violinist? Yeah, violinist. Oh, I thought it was Viola. Narciso Figueroa, who's uh, one of the members of the Metropolitan Opera House Orchestra, and uh, he has, has, a distingu has had a distinguished career, both as a chamber music and as a soloist. Uh, I have collaborated with him since we were kids in school. In the so all you I Juilliard boys. All the Juilliard boys. We know each other very well. Uh, and so, he's, uh, we had last night his cousin, Guillermo Figueroa. We had uh, Olga Kern the, the time before. before. The night before. We had Michael Lewin. We had Ron Perlman. We have had so many wonderful uh, personalities yeah. that has parade uh, here at the Canon Club. And we started the day after the real lockdown. We started the day after the l lockdown. Talking wow, to all great. of our, fr our friends right. in the music and performance business yes. to get a little feedback on what they're going through, right. what happened to their careers, right. what happened, what's happened. and. Uh, in between, we punctuate this with a little music yes. from um, either their pianos or some YouTube's performances or something to keep we it a little bit. We had Max Valdez also joining us on, I think, on Monday. He talked a lot. He's conductor, he's of, the conductor of the Puerto Rico Symphony, Symphony and the director of the Casal Festival. Um, who else? Oh, and we have had not only we have students, uh, advanced students from the conservatory, right? And Rolando Alejandro, who's graduating from the Juilliard School, and, uh, and a pianist, a wonderful pianist, and Brian, who's graduating from the conservatory here, with Maria del Carmen Hill. And we've been everywhere, from California to Moscow, Hollywood to Moscow. <laughs> and so. it's really kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah. And, uh, we have some technical di difficulties every now and then. We all, because uh, we're doing a little something a little more complicated because it's, it's two way. Right. Yeah. You know, we want to carry conversations with uh, our guests so that we really understand. Right. And yeah. we can converse about what they're going through, what they've lost, what's going, what's changing. And uh, what I'm uh, feeling is everybody's very up. You know, they're doing artists do the best. You have to do whatever. the best. Yes, you have Look the at best me, the painter sculptor. Now I've turned to a, <laughs> a, a little uh, afternoon interview. Interview uh, personality. <laughs> personality. <laughs> anyway, where is Narciso? Is he ready to come on? Oh, there he is. Oh. Uh, hey, Narcy. How are you? How are Wonderful you? Wonderful to see you. Greetings. Wonderful to see York. you. Oh, yes, and New York, New Jersey, but it's just across the river um, in, in Cliffside Park, New Jersey, where, where I live in an apartment on the 18th floor. So I have a 
a large, you know, very beautiful view. But um, locked in, like just like everyone else. <laughs> right. Oh, this is really. But uh, we go day by day. I'm honored to see both of you. So happy to see both. It's a uh, head colorful. We in a long time. And, and, and she has a wonderful outfit every day. I want to be fantastic. very colorful and make everybody Everything feel matches. happy. <laughs> People need to feel happy. Yeah. That's and right. that's our uh, mission. position. Our we mission. women, we have to dress things up. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, you know, alive, things alive, especially, w you know, when, with this uh, pandemic and, you know, the way we live now. You know, it's just, it's, uh, you have to make something out of it. Uh, even, you know, you can get depressing, you, you can get uh, uh, slow, and but uh, you have to do something about it you know, yourself. Otherwise, I mean, this nobody can do test. anything unless you, you know, as an individual, rise to do something with it. Right. Yes. That's true. The test of our uh, creativity. Uh, I was thinking, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning who's a <coughs> wonderful organist. Uh, he, uh, he's the organist of the, one, the, the big Presbyterian church in Pittsburgh, New Jersey. He took a sabbatical because he wanted to uh, finish his uh, doctorate degree. And he's in California, but he has to come back to Pittsburgh. And he, he told me this morning, I don't know if I'm going to have a church. I don't know if you're going to have a job. Uh, he says, I, you know, my choir won't be able to meet for a long time until at the end of the year. So we are all living this in, in the same, uh, the same uh, right. uh, boat. A as long as you're performing musician or uh, make a living out of music, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, it's a tough and I remember tough the last time. The last performance that we did uh, were, uh, March 11th, uh, I think it was Cosi Fantuca at the Met, and uh, we looked at each other, and uh, you know, at the end, and said, "Well, we might just call it. This might be the last show." It, yes. Sure, it was. The following day, from then on, you know, we've been, um, uh, you know, unemployed. So it's. Uh, it was the end. We cleaned up our lockers and things, and uh, came back home. And at, at first, the first few weeks, you know, like I still had that rush from from the uh, uh, the season, and it just it, t it takes a, a while until it finally sunk on me. And and you know, the death of a, a dear colleague of mine from the orchestra, when I was talking at an intermission, the last performance, and uh, that really hit me. Uh, you know, hurt me, and uh, I felt for him and his family and everybody, all of my colleagues. But uh, things happen, you know, and then I was scared, very scared, because I said, well, then, you know, what about me? He was, but, yeah, uh, very for cool. the moment, yeah, thank God, I'm, I've been, and my family, my, my, uh, both my sons and my wife, he well, was, we're lucky. And, uh, he was one of the okay. first victims, right, of, of this Correct. Attack. One of the first victims, in, in the arts. I mean, in, in our field of, you know, uh, you know, Lincoln Center, I would say, uh, generally. I haven't heard anything from anyone from the New York Philharmonic or the Ballet, but that's the province. And there were several people that have had, have had the, the, the virus, but they, they, uh, they survived it. They and survived they're, they're it. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But then, you know, it just, it takes time, you know, and, you know, finally I got into a conclusion maybe about a week or two weeks ago, and uh, I call in, uh, you know, um, well, the shop where, where you buy strings and accessories for string instruments and all that said, well, I'm going to get, you know, whatever, you know, a, a dozen strings or whatever. I'm going to change my strings and start practicing. That's what I'm, what I do. Right. I practice take, and yes. teach and I, I open my book and playing violin, you know, solo box sonatas yes. and one or two of the Paganini Caprices and other ages and I think getting my hands, you know, yes. together. I'm getting my head together. <laughs> That's well. right. That's how it you is. Know, when yeah. things when things work like that, even even though no matter what what the surroundings are, at least there's something to 
that we hold on to as musicians so we hold is our instrument right. and, and, and music. So, you know, I can't, it, it's, it's so depressing to not be able to be, uh, um, um, for instance, uh, tomorrow night was the, the last performance of the opera season. I mean, we, we stopped eight weeks ago. Wow. You know, there's, there's a big loss of revenue there, income, and for the Met too, a big, I mean, a very big loss. Awesome. And uh, then after that, we continue all the way until mid June with uh, with symphonic concerts at Carnegie Hall, but all that of course is it's, uh, it's canceled. And um, and then uh, you know we're in talks with the committee and and the general manager about what's going to happen. What will we, will we be able to open in September or not? Ah. Well, it's so difficult, you know. Nobody knows. Well, what can you do with our? Yeah, I was I was talking with Kiko. I remember, uh, I mean, when this whole thing started, I said, "Well, maybe the first thing they should do when when you know when the opera season when all this is over is to start with umbalo and mascara." <laughs> <By Right. early. laughs> <laughs> Everybody's masked. Right. Yeah. right. Everybody we're all, in, we're all going masks. We're going with masks. We're all going. Right. But, but it only happens in the third act. It's, it's in the right. middle of the third act, third act at the end of the opera. Yes. But what, what about the years? What, what if you're going to do Roman and Julia? You're going to get close, Roman and Julia, and you have a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see you know, it, singing on? Well, I don't think you can sing with a mask on, so that's, that's, that's no. not going to work. No. Absolutely not. And what about you know a noble player or a clarinet right. or a trumpet, a tuba? Right. Right. You, oh, you know. God love us. Oh. I tried to I tried to move the mask on. <laughs> 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 it just felt so strange. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's but you know we have we, we got to laugh. Once in a while, because it's uh, yes, we are. Well, we have to that's keep, what we're keep, keep to the spirit going. You know, even though we, we know we don't know what lies out there, and then you know, and we're got, we're hurting financially. Uh, the only uh, other thing is just uh, at least we're so far, you know, in, you know, in good health. And I feel for all the people, other families. That's, that, that's know, the important thing. thing. Healthy. Yeah, healthy. Yeah. Healthy and uh, things are, are working here. I mean, we have electricity, we have water, we have, you know, so you can't compare it to what we went through with Maria, although that's very fresh in our minds. And as a fair, um, it, it just doesn't seem that this could really happen. And last of all, to Puerto Rico, again. We don't need yeah, this. We don't need this. Well, <laughs> You were in, in some ways Puerto Rico went through even worse because there were you know when you have absolutely no water, no right. sewage system, no electricity, and every I mean no food. It, it's uh, you know that's that's the ultimate. You know here at least I mean you have all those things, except uh, it, we don't know who the enemy is. You know you right. <laughs> that's you, you go out and and, and, and you know that's why probably there are less cases over there because people are a bit more you know uh, you know careful yeah, everybody's being very careful here no i wouldn't say that over here you know some people i, mean, I would say that majority is but always you see somebody coming around you know without a mask and getting clothes and you know it's just an attitude of you know uh, it, yeah it, it, well, it, there's think, a certain, see, a certain we, we have had catastrophes in the last uh, few years, we had Maria, we had the earthquake, we had Irma. So collectively, uh, Puerto, the Ricans Puerto Ricans are, are they know what, but see, the United States hasn't gone through this. This is so they right. were not really conscious of what this is. But we already right. have had this in here in Puerto Rico. So if they say another thing coming, we make sure <laughs> that it's yeah. not going to mean Nobody minimize everything. Yeah, that we always were told. Yeah, well, we're because we're told. Right, yeah. Yes, it's so. been very, yeah. very difficult. So let's talk about you and your career and your plans. And I think we have a uh, video floating around there. Uh, you and I playing <laughs> 
the war in Kenya, the oh, yeah. anthem of Puerto Rico, that was written by your the arrangement by your grandfather, and your father who was a great violinist. Cachiro wrote the the cadenza. I right. heard not too long ago. I don't know if you was in your site or somebody's site an interpretation of your father that just blew me away. Wow, what a violinist. I, oh. He was in the style of Milstein, you know, all the great ones. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they had on an, an, uh, YouTube, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a live concert in, from 1963. He was, he was in Maya West at the, uh, at the uh, College of uh, Engineers. And a uh, uh, close friend of my father then, Osvaldo Orrata Doria, who is a, yes. a professor of engineer of mathematics. And, and he was a, he loved the violin. He played the violin also and studied with my father. And he made the arrangements. And, and they gave, my father gave a recital at that time with, with Giannis Elias Lopez Tova. Right. And they did a program with, with the Debbie Sonata. She went Cisonata, to school with Elias. And, and, and the, just our Frank Sonata as well, and the Frank yeah. Sonata is the one that you heard, and it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely it's out of this world. It's, just, it's out of this you know, world, yeah. No, and 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 it's yeah. it's playing himself, you know. It's just uh, it, when when my father played and when he put the bow in the strings, everybody shut up. It was just like something, you know. Yes. And it, it's not like like somebody coming in and slapping you. It's just it, it was it's just really Natural. caring, Natural. A, a sound that really uh. It draws, it draws you in. Sends you in. It's like a magnet. Yeah. yeah like a magnet. We all. Like a magnet. Or Narciso, uh, talk about the Figueroa family because I think there are a lot of people listening that uh, don't know how important uh, to Puerto Rico your family has been in the music field. Yes. Well, I know Kiko since we were, you know, kids, very, very, you know, uh, little. I mean, I've been seven years old. When he was studying with my aunt Carmelina, and Carmelina was a, a phenomenal piano a teacher. Uh, yeah. She was a, actually her her system is the one that has brought in all in, uh, generations of musicians in Puerto Rico. She and, and my aunt, my two other aunts, Leonora and, and Angelina, were the creators, the founders, along with my grandfather, who was a conductor. At, the, the founders of the Escuela Libre de Musica, the free school of music, which has brought up, you know, generations of musicians and still does, uh, you know, amazing all the people that have come out, not only in the classical field, but they're also in, you know, in popular music, salsa and jazz as well, right. you know, but, you know, the foundation uh, of these musicians, it's, it's, it's you know, it's solid. A solid foundation. Solid. Yeah. He wrote in, in the French school, you know. There are right. Very few people got to to uh, be in a class at the Ecole, you know, the Ecole Normale de Musique in Paris, like Carmelina did with uh, Nadia Boulanger. Then probably in the 1930s, um, you know, happened before, the most important lady in, in, in the field of classical music was her. I mean, yeah. all the composers were after her, you know, uh, because they they admired her tremendously. Feeling Stravinsky, you know, Paul Duca, you name it. You keep Honegger. They were all around and surrounding her, you know, for advice, even when they were writing. Stravinsky admired her tremendously on Saturday's book. But Carmelina was in that class. I mean, to get into that class, you had to be, you know, sit, you sit in the, on a keyboard, you have to read seven clefs all at once, oh, no matter time. what. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, she learned all training. about training. The, the French yeah, training. Yeah, the year training yeah. is incredible. I mean, yes. she developed me a perfect pitch, you know, she put my ears, it's a lot, you know, you better do it in tune. <laughs> you would, you know. And but you know, this, this tradition, tradition, I was reading in Chopin's biography, goes all the way back to to Chopin's time, eh? the Paris Conservatoire, the school, all the teachers, Marmontel, and uh, did, that was the most uh, 
famous uh, music uh, tradition in Europe at that time. I, I mean, aside from Russia, and that's a different world. But um, uh, French produced so many musicians. That oh, yeah. 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 Well, big school. The French. Big school, big. Big school. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's so a great school. So you studied at the Juilliard School. You studied at the University of Michigan. You right. played. Uh, tell us a little bit about your teachers, your training. Right. Well, you know, at home when I was a little kid, of course, my father was my big, biggest influence. That still is the biggest yes. influence in my life, and, and my uncle Jose Pepito. Of course, right. I mean they both. Uh, that was the foundation I had, a, you know, as a violinist. So right. I, I, I kind of grew up also, you know, uh, on my own. It was very diff it was very difficult to take out a violin and start playing and practicing when my father was around. You know, it wasn't a lesson. You know, it, it, it lasted five minutes and and then start crying and forget it. That was the end. But uh, we we got into you know understanding later on in our lives. And uh, I remember when I left home, I've been 16, 17 years old, and I, I won a big scholarship. I went to the uni University of Michigan. And my uh, violin teacher there was uh, the Cuban violin, noted Cuban violins. And Angel Reyes, Reyes. Yes, who, who had, was, was a, one uh, of the winners of the Queen Elizabeth, right? Queen Elizabeth and first prize uh, of the Paris Conservatoire. And he was a great violinist himself. And, uh, he, he, you know, he was very excellent at setting me up, you know, with, with certain with certain things that I learned from him that I will never forget. Right. You know that uh, of uh, you know mechanics. Um, I thought later on that Julia would have been better because I, I would have more time to you know focus on the violin the music. more. Right. Yeah. In so many academics, and then and not only that, the fact that there are so many other students also. You learn. You know, it's right. like tennis. You, you learn by playing with better players. With other players, and, right? And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I ended up at Julia playing with Dorothy Delay. Uh, I, which I, I I ended up learning more from, as I say, from playing around right. with with my fellow students, right. and uh, you know after that I, I, I freelanced in New York for a while. I, I played my concerts and recitals here and there, and uh, played with my family. Right. New York with Twitter and with my cousin Guillermo Rafi, and, and did my uh, my tours with them. Enjoy them. Uh, later on, I, uh, I thought, you know, it's very hard to make a, a living in New York or any place, but in New York particularly. And, um, uh, you know, I, I had things, you know, it happens in the life I see you in a cast. I had a very big problem yes. early in my 20s. When I, I remember. I almost lost yes. my right arm yeah, and I had right to be arm. completely reconstructed and all that. And that, right. that took away a... a some very good years, yes. um, uh, you know, of playing or, you know, to get to the top or as far as I could. Right. But then when the time came to, to do it, you know, I was determined to uh, get back. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, I ended up playing at the Met. And uh, as long, along with playing with the Met, too, I decided, you know, I always like what I do with a violin mm -hmm. more than just playing in an orchestra. Right. So besides doing that, I, I'm always, you know, I've never gotten careless about, you know, uh, practicing for a solo recital or right. a violin concerto, even modern concertos too, and pieces that I've done, you know, world premieres, or sonatas, I mean, violin concertos, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people. Uh, the last one I did was a sort of like maybe seven years ago, I, I did premiere in Puerto Rico. Roberto Sierra's violins on piano sonata. Right. Uh, so you know, when I'm 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 always um, uh, looking forward to uh, to playing, and, and that's why uh, I said you know I'm I'm yeah. locked in, so might as well just get you know my fingers uh, back into shape and, and or better improve. There's always something to improve. Yeah. All, all the time. Gotta be ready. And, uh, you never know. Yeah, you never know. This may be this will exactly. be as fast as it that's can. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I can't why think don't about it. Do, huh? Yeah. 
What? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I can't think of, you know, the pandemic is over, and then you look at your hands and say, what, what do I do? I have all this right. time. And, exactly. You know, exactly. So, yeah. so, I mean, not, not in a sad, exaggerated manner, because it yeah. takes time, you know, I'm, I'm not here playing six, eight hours a day. I'm too old for that. I, I don't think I need that. But, yeah. but daily, a little we'll bit, keep it, you know. Keep it going, going, in shape. Going. Uh, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and then planning, if I'm making plans of, you know, programs, to do. I want to talk with you again, Kiko. <laughs> yes, with you. So, so speaking yeah. of, let's put a clip of our collaboration together. Huh? Are you ready, Dowries? Are we oh, wow. ready, Dowries? Oh, he's yeah, I remember that. that. Okay. Okay. Love to hear that. Let's see. Fantasia laborinqueña. This fantasia, or fantasy, is Puerto Rico's national anthem. My grandfather, Jesus Figueroa wrote it in 1955 and dedicated it to my father, Cachiro, a wonderful violinist. It begins with a dramatic introduction, followed by the anthem. At the end of the anthem, there follows a very difficult cadenza for the violin, which my father wrote for himself. This cadenza is also the anthem in grand manner, followed by a breathing and heroic coda.
particular uh, Work. recording of this. Yeah, recording of this. Although, I must tell you, uh, having been a competitor in so many horse shows, whenever anybody wins, you know, you always play the, play the anthem of their country. So I, it's always very emotional for me to hear the Borinquena, the anthem of Puerto Rico, because it means somebody won. And I'm almost in tears listening. You played it so beautifully. Thank you. No, it's, it's a yeah. It's, it's a very hard work. Very very difficult. Oh. Technically, I mean, and, and, you know what, and what it means, you know, to play a national anthem. You know, um, back in the days, uh, Paganini did write. You know, you know, set of God Save the Queen, Vinyaski. Yes. Wrote the uh, the set of, uh, of uh, variations on the Austrian national anthem. Right. Uh, the Vietnam, uh, the Great Belgium wrote the, the Yankee Doo, you know, uh, variations also. I mean, I I really don't know exactly precisely what my grandfather what inspired him to do this, but uh, I mean, certainly having my father near, he knew he knew that you know my father would, would do something incredible with it. What he did, I mean, right. the cadenza is just. It itself, it's, it's incredible what he did. Exactly. I, uh, yeah. I had him, uh, you know, he, he just picked the violin and played. And every time that he played, he played it differently. He did he change something. I here remember and there. him when in the Instituto de Cultura, the old one, I heard him playing this. Yeah. Uh, I think with the, the orchestra of Instituto de Cultura, the chamber orchestra once. When did you right. perform that? Well, we just heard. We just did this when was it? Yeah, this was in July 2013, seven years ago. Wow, it's been so time flies. Seven years ago. Time, time flies. flies. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. That great, and great, oh, great. It's, it's beautiful and so wonderfully done. Right. And you know, it's really. And really uh, like four years ago, I played it in Puerto Rico. But this time, there, there is an, an orchestra arrangement, uh, you know, a company, an orchestra arrangement done by my, my uncle Guillermo for, with a string orchestra. Yes. But uh, also, my, my, which I, I, I played it in a concert uh, with my family, a Figueroa family concert, uh, right. you know, with a Puerto Rico symphony where right. Guillermo played and then uh, right. Rafi, my brother, and Yvonne, the Beethoven triple concerto. And, Right. And in the second, in the second part of the concert, I played the Sarasat is the the Goiner Rising, the Gypsy Airs, right. and I played this, the the uh, the, the fantasy, the Borinquena as well. Um, um, it was a, well, it was a big hit, of course. I mean, to play it with orchestra is also even. Uh, but my grandfather also had, you know, sketches. He, he's writing it for a full orchestra. You know, I mean, yes. in, with winds and brass and. And, and percussion, you know. I'm sure one of these days, hopefully, uh, you know, um, we're still <laughs> around and, and wow, still we'll, play and, we'll all be and able to play together again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Play together. That has a lot of meaning these yes, days. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, playing it with Kiko is like playing with an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's good. Good for you. Well, playing with an orchestra. <laughs> Thank you. you know, uh, right, about or right talking there. about orchestra. You know, the Met Orchestra is one of the great orchestras in the world. I and do know and that. Had and we uh, have James Jeffrey Levine. Goldberg coming on Jeffrey's Monday. Jeffrey's coming on Monday. And uh, Marciso has been a member for many, many, many years. And it's fascinating how many great conductors you have played on there uh, at the Met oh Orchestra. My. Can if you I, name I, a few? I, I, you I drop, names, drop names here. Drop, drop some names. names. I drop some names. Well, no, actually, with names, um, well, actually, the. But biggest names of, of of course I mean all the years my boss was Maestro Levine, which sure. we, of course we know you know in Grand Manor one of the great sure. British conductors. Here, there's no, no argument about that, and I had a good relationship with him as well as my brother too. Yeah. Uh, we all you know 
uh, got very well with, with Maestro Levine, musically, personally, also, you know, in a professional level. Right. And uh, I remember playing with Carlos Cliver oh, Carlos several Cliver. times, you know, I thought we did Ro the Rosen Cavalier, La Boheme, uh, La Traviata, uh, yeah, things like that. Uh, and um, uh, all conductors that, that you know, they, they, they came in, they were already very old, like Manuel Rosenthal, you know. Manuel Rosenthal, and, uh, yes. Manuel Rosenthal came, I remember playing under him. Um, Sigi Ozawa uh, also, I remember Sigi Ozawa. Ozawa. Uh, I, yeah, with, with, with Ozawa, we, uh, we, we did, I remember, I, I think I, you came to one of the performances. Yes, the Tchaikovsky, we did, uh, Pick Dam. The Tchaikovsky, we did uh, um, the Queen of Spades. Yeah, and you, you know Negan. Well, yeah, you, uh, he was exquisite. He, yeah. he did a Tchaikovsky. He was very, very refined. Right, very and refined. At the same time, we had also Daniel Barenboim doing. Oh, Barenboim! Uh, I heard uh, Tristan Isolde. Yeah, with Tristan. Yeah. yeah, very good. Very um, good. I, I keep going on the list. Uh, Lauren Mazel. Lauren Mazel. Uh, I mean, you know, he passed away several years ago. He was, you know, uh, I remember. Uh, just dozens of I, I played even before that with Bernstein. I remember when when um, Schulte came to Juilliard and conducted the right. Juilliard Orchestra. Um, I never conducted at the Met during my time, um, but uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful conductors and wonderful cast. And now we're also, you know, we're very lucky. And honored to have uh, Yannick Neset yes. Sagan, our yes. new music director. Yes. He's a, a terrific, fine conductor, a fine musician. Wonderful. He's younger, the, the younger yeah. generation. Generation. But yes. uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful person to work with. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, I wish him the best. I mean, he's, right. It's too bad that we're going through what we're going through. <laughs> but <laughs> everyone else is in the same boat. <laughs> We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. Right. And what right. is uh, uh, interesting, and, it, it, and we do get our glitches every now and then. You know, I mean, sometimes all of this doesn't work. We've got wires and, and things going on, but uh, we're trying to make the best of it, you know? And I think that this is where we're going to be going, certainly for a while, and maybe we'll continue uh, making a real field yeah, out of this kind of thing. Yes, because yes, it's wonderful. Uh, uh, music is uh, going to be going through some very special uh, places now, and we're going to need some incredible equipment. Right. Uh, this allows us to reach a yeah. large, large audience, yes. potentially, we and uh, right. we're, we're right. doing that. We're, we're, we're trying that. so hard to get the right equipment exactly. so that you can hear it well. And right. uh, uh, Campeche is a little bored here because uh, we're we only hear you through this little wire, and he likes to hear the whole music. So he's sitting here because he's waiting for somebody to play. <laughs> yeah, he's ready to make some music here. And uh, we share, uh, it's been great sharing with you and all the people that have heard you and uh, people know you, have known you through this uh, and other venues. Um, so thank you so much. And here we are. I have to. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored. I thank Club. you. Well, we are the Cannon Club. Of the Gallery Inn. Which in. is also the Steinway Society yes. of Puerto Rico. Right. And we promote young artists coming along, bringing in the older teachers. Mm -hmm. So we have this wonderful group of older and younger, which meet who meet here, yeah. and have concerts and lessons. And we are we've been doing this for really eight to ten years with the with the. Uh, uh, musical, yeah. uh, but for 25 years yeah. with um, Henry Hutchinson uh, uh, Ponce Festival right. that he puts on, it has put on. I hear that it, it's now canceled for this year because uh, of the problems we're going through. But uh, wonderful musicians have been coming yeah. through this. Uh, a gallery, and that's how we started collecting pianos. We now have six. We have a pipe wow. organ, 
<laughs> we have three guitars. <laughs> we have six pianos and five birds who love to dance to all the music. And we love bringing you together and having a little a chat to share what, what your life is right. going through now. Right. And bring some of your um, projects, problems, uh, and thoughts about what's going to happen uh, to us and uh, this performance field that we're all connected to. Connected to, to yeah, absolutely. Because it makes, um, yeah. th th the history is happening mm -hmm. right now. We're in the yeah. midst of it. We are, we are. Yeah. And, and it's very It's sad. a matter of, it's going to be a long time. I mean, but I, I, I want to, I want to thank you both for, for this opportunity to express sure. myself and have me, you know, play a little bit with, along yeah. with, with Kiko and, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know, when we've been playing to, you know, it's, it's like an old glove. Yeah, 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 You know, you know, what, what, what else I sound like, yeah. what, what am I going to do here or there? It, it kind of by we sense. We know each other already, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and you know, so not really be wise too. And it's always a, you know, I never had any problem with balance playing with them at all. And it's, it's, right. it's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, it's, 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 I'm honored somebody. to be here with both of you. Incredible musicians. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So, uh, you know, to see both of you and in good health. I hope you both stay Thank in good you. health. Thank you. Too. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank you so much for being with us. Sharing. Thank uh, you, thank you. Your we'll words, touch. your thoughts, your uh, music, here. Right. and thank you for being a part of this today. And don't forget to watch, to watch us, us on a daily basis. We're on Instagram, I will. YouTube, I will. Facebook, and <laughs> I've got a bird threatening uh, a little wire we, behind me. And the and, Canon uh, Dot Club at six o'clock. We are all here, and you can right. re see us. Yes. Uh, again, on YouTube and I believe on Instagram. Yes, we yeah, yes. we're trying to yeah. broaden yeah. our yeah. platforms so that you all will these all programs have really can uh, be good coverage and people will be able to yeah. see right. you and hear you and hear what we're trying to do. And what I'm so proudly as an adopted Puerto Rican, I want to tell everybody, I am so happy to be in Puerto Rico because there's so much art here. Yes. There's so much talent. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on. Mm -hmm. And I just feel proud to be part of this. Puerto and, Rico. And, the, and we have to say also that uh, we have a little society that's a nonprofit that you can donate to. So yes. at some point uh, when we get our in things going here, there'll be a little donate button for you to push for those to help us to bring, keep the music going. Narciso. Thank you. Mm. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. So wonderful. Yeah. Great seeing you. Thank you, thank you. Stay healthy, stay well. Stay well. Okay. Bye. Everybody. Oh. Okay, so we have a day tomorrow again, right? At six o'clock, the Canon Club. Is it still the on? The Canon Dot Club. The Canon Dot Club. Huh? Hi. Well, I'm Jim Owen. I'm Jim's bestie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a member of the Canon Club. And I think you should join the Cannon Club. Thank you. I'm Jan's bestie. Hi, I'm Jim Owen. I think you should join the Cannon Club. Thank you. I'm holding your wine for you. I'm Jan's bestie. Thank you.